Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us again on um, our webinar series for the 2017 calendar year. My name is Doug Kresh. Yeah, I've been hosting most of these, although we'll pass them around to some of the other guys going forward. But today we've got a little bit of an interesting concept. Um, we're going to talk about some tricks and tools and utilities in the software. So we're titling this Fixing Mistakes, Errors, Whatever and some tricks for deleting wrong entries, making edits to some of the entries, undoing. And um, I've even added a few other things here at the, uh, the end of this time allowing, which I think we're going to have. There might even be a few more things on the agenda today, too. So as always, we're going to take 45 minutes or so to go through the overview. Uh, we'll take a couple minutes at the end of the presentation to address any questions or concerns pertaining to today's talk at, topics. I'm sorry. And I think everybody knows by now, um, all the webinar information is posted on the help system under the section called webinar. So you can always go, go back to that. I've had some comments from a couple of the people that say it's great. You know, they, they're too busy to join us today. Um, but they can always go back and, uh, and listen to the presentation and look at the documentation behind that. So let's go ahead and dive into our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to talk about edit entries for payable accounts. So we're going to restrict some of these because, you know, time allowing and things like that, uh, there's, there's a variety. But these are some of the more important ones, we feel. We're going to talk about changing and strictly focused on customer payments when um, a service advisor or some accident happens and we mark the payment method wrong. We're going to show you how to get that corrected. We're going to talk about deleting entries. We have the ability to go in and delete payments, service charges, adjustments. There's a couple of other things that um, we can look into and we're going to review that today. There's an undo feature. This uh, probably hasn't been around that long and, and there's a variety of subsections to this that we'll walk through each one and and show you how to, how to undo if you've made an incorrect entry and you don't want to edit it or you don't want to delete it, things like that. There's This is another option. Another one we've added is work order release deposit. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how to make deposits and how to release those if the customer changes their mind or you're going to do a refund. And then lastly, there's a delete item recovery which um, I've used a couple times myself, and um, we're going to walk through the items that can be um, del undeleted, uh, essentially. We can recover those from the software. And again, time allowing, we might touch on one or two more things here um, at the end of the presentation. So let's dive right in. First item we're going to talk about today is going to be edit entries, and this is going to be strictly from the payable account. So there's some conditions around this, so I just want to walk through these and make sure everybody understands. So from the accounting section, payable accounts, we have the ability to edit entries for the due date, and that's only going to be on purchase invoices. In other words, if you buy something, whether it's parts, whether it's a bill you enter, um, you, can, you can change the due date. Uh, payable accounts, we have the ability to edit. So if you have, by chance, posted the invoice or the bill to the wrong payable account, okay, we can save you some time. You don't have to delete it and re-enter it. We can just move it to the right payable account. And then there's a description field in, um, in each of these that you also have uh, the ability to do an edit to. These edits are going to kind of be restricted, and like I say, there are some conditions around this. One of them is going to be, of course, on the payable account. As long as there is not a debit or a credit posted to that line entry, um, you'll be able to make the edit to the payable account. But if there's been any payments against it or any adjustments against it of any kind, then we're not going to be able to move it. But you're going to see later in the presentation, we have the ability to delete adjustments and payments. These edits are available to the supplier invoice, to a bill. Both of these, A and B, are going to be purchase or owing entries. We can do these edits to a return item credit slip, but we cannot change the due date on a return item credit slip, essentially because when you enter a credit from a return item credit slip, a warranty claim, or a contra, the due date is the same date that you process it and these items will all be reducing. They're not a purchase or an owing entry. So let's, let's go into the software and take a look at how, um, how this all works. So from the software, I'm going to go into accounting. I'm going to 
make sure I'm on payables. I switch back and forth between payables and receivables here. So I'm on payables and I'm going to locate the supplier I'm going to work with today. And the supplier I've selected for today is good parts and on time. Now in here, obviously your information is going to be a whole lot more than, than you see in mine, but I just wanted to narrow this down to the things we're talking about to um, today um, so that it's not so confusing and, uh, and so cluttered up. So on the payable side, okay, we said we have the ability to make some edits to the supplier invoice. So I'm going to select the supplier invoice and I can select edit from either a right click option, right mouse, right mouse click, sorry, or I can select edit from the top menu. They both take you to the same place. Okay, so if we go into edit, here I have the ability to adjust or change the due date. So remember, I can only change the due date on something I owe for, which would be a positive entry in the system. Okay, so use my drop down calendar. I have the ability to change within the current month. I have the ability to click on the month and move to a different month. I even have the ability to click on the year and change the year. So we have the ability to change the due date. Okay, I'm not really going to make a change, but you guys see how it works. What if we posted this bill in error to the wrong supplier? We have the ability to change the supplier, meaning move it from this payable account to a different payable account. That's done by clicking on the binoculars under the account name line. Okay, and then simply identify who's the other supplier that you want to send this to. So I would just do a search on who it is. Okay, I can search by name or account numbers, and you can see I get quite a few that come up on here. Okay, and I could then move this bill or this supplier invoice to a different supplier. So keep that in mind. That's done from the binoculars. And the last entry we have the ability to edit is going to be the description. Okay. The description that's put in is automatically um, identified or entered from the software. It's programmed to do that. Okay, but you have the ability to go in here and make a note. So maybe I wanted to make a note. Okay, or whatever kind of note you want. So you can completely change the description. You can add or append information to it and whatever you make a change on these, then date, supplier, whatever, okay, that's then going to copy back to the system. Now, obviously, if I move this to a different supplier, it would disappear from this payable account, and I'd have to go search for that in the other payable account. So there's one of the entries that we can edit as a supplier invoice. We also have the ability to take a bill. In other words, if I bought something that I'm not going to resell, it might be training, it might be shop supplies, it might be hand cleaner, who knows. Same scenario. I can get to my edit from the right click or from the menu above. I can change the due date. I can change the supplier. I can change the description. So the same features when we have an owing invoice, meaning a positive entry under the amount column meaning I have, I owe them for this. Now, we also have the ability to change this on a return item credit slip. So up here you see I have returned some parts to this supplier and I've received a credit for those parts that I've returned. I have the ability to do an edit, but see, I don't have the ability to change the due date. On a credit entry, okay, in this case where I'm crediting the account, then that is going to be posted to the exact same day it's processed. But I do have the ability to change supplier, and I do have the ability to make any edits to the description. Another entry we have the ability to make some adjustments to is a warranty claim. Again, this is a negative, so you know it's crediting the, the amount of money that, or reducing the amount of money that I owe from the edit screen. Can't change the due date. I could change the supplier. And of course, I have the ability to change the description again. A warranty claim. Okay, um, actually, we just did warranty claim, sorry. So let's go to the last one, which is Contra. I don't know how many of you know about Contra. You might want to get into help if you don't understand it. But Contra 
allows us to move money between payables and receivable accounts. Those of you who work with national accounts, okay, where you buy from a supplier, national account customers come in, but you never collect money, you send that invoice to the national account, and then they will process that, usually posting a credit to your payable account. There is some information on help, so I've made a contra entry in here, and from edit, again, it reduces what I owe the supplier so I can't change the due date. If I accidentally posted it wrong, I can change it to a different payable account, and I also have the ability to enter any notes or in the description field. So keep that in mind, okay? Edits are gonna be available for the due date on purchase invoices. The payable account, you can move it as long as there has not been a credit or debit. Okay, and the description, and these edits are available for here. Let me just show you one little trick that you want to keep in mind. Okay, to identify if a credit or debit, anything, has been posted to one of the entries, always look at your amount column, which identifies the original amount of that entry, and compare that to the outstanding column. If those two columns match up with the same value, and there have been no other adjustments of any kind uh, posted to it. If there is a difference between the two, whether it's outstanding as less than the amount, okay, or any difference in the two, then something, uh, an entry has been posted to it, and thereby you're not going to be able to change um, the supplier on these. So you'll probably walk across that, and when you see that, you know, keep that in mind, but we've identified that here on the slideshow, which I think everybody will have had the ability to take a look at. So hopefully you can take use of some of those features um, in here, and again, we'll have a document that goes along with this from our help system, too, that you can, you can refer to. The next slide, next activity fix we, we want to talk about is changing a customer payment method. This happens quite a bit. Okay, I've seen it seen it quite often. So in the software, let's go back. Let's just make a scenario that maybe we were in the system and we posted the wrong method of payment for whatever reason. Okay, the customer may have paid with cash, but we marked it as a check. They may have paid with a Visa, we marked it as a MasterCard. So we have the ability to make those changes because once you've posted the invoice, those of you who have been on the software for a while know that you cannot change that. A posted invoice cannot be changed, but the method of payment can be changed. To do that, we're going to go into banking, which is where the cash drawer resides. The cash drawer, just think of it just like your cash register. All incoming money and some outgoing money, depending on how the outgoing money is posted, is then detailed in the cash drawer. It's just like opening up your cash register and you have all your details in here. We can sort these by the payment method and then you can organize these pretty much any way you want by one of the columns. Let's just make an example in this scenario that a customer came in and we marked their payment method is wrong. Why don't we take Jane Doe, an example. So when I'm looking at this, and just, these usually aren't picked up until somebody reconciles the, reconciles the cash drawer or unless somebody, you know, fesses up and said, hey, I, you know, I made a mistake and it can be corrected immediately. So go to the cash drawer, identify the incorrect method of payment, and pretty much all of our menu options, talking about across the top, are available from a right-click option also. So I want to change method of payment, which is available from a right click on my mouse. It's also available from the menu on top. The software knows all the details because I've selected that item. It knows the date, the amount, the invoice, the customer, the original method of payment. And all I do is say, we need to change that. And that was actually paid with a MasterCard. So you see, you use your drop down and you'll have all your method of payments. Let's just move it to MasterCard and watch in the background because when I process that, okay, that payment's been moved. If we look under MasterCard, okay, there's the payment that we moved. So we can move it around under the right method of payment as long as we do that before we make our bank deposit. 
okay? So just keep that in mind. Any of the items in here, okay? You have the ability to change. One of the things that uh, has come up is posting it to a receivable account. Uh, we may have to look at that a little bit further down the road, but right now we'll just focus on what we see within the cash drawer, how the customer has made the payment. So a pretty simple process from banking, cash drawer, payment method, change the customer method of payment. Hope that'll help you guys a little bit if it was something that uh, you guys find useful.